Welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. I'm coming to you today from Houston, Texas, USA, where we have very, very hot summers. And so I thought it might be nice to make a raw meal using only raw vegetables and fresh fruit. Because Texas used to be part of Mexico, it's a really nice idea also to do it in a Mexican style. We're going to do a little variation on some very traditional Mexican dishes. The first thing I'm going to be making is a watermelon gazpacho, which is usually made just with tomatoes. And then I'm going to serve as a main dish, a garden fresh burrito with a mango salsa, which is also usually made with tomatoes. So we're ready to start our gazpacho. And this is the closest thing to cooking you're going to do for this meal, because you need to peel the skins off of tomatoes, which is very hard work unless you know the trick, which is you boil some water, which I've got some water boiling back here, and you just put these in for, oh, 30 seconds, really. Not very long. So I'm just going to let those be there for, really, only about 30 seconds. So I'm going to take these out and put them in the cold water. Next thing I'm going to be doing is trying to take this skin off. And you can see how this is happening pretty easily now. See, it just comes right off. And of course, you can leave the peel on, but most people really prefer to peel them for the soup. It just makes it a little bit nicer. And then from here, I'm going to quarter it and seed it. And then, once again, we're going to be doing the long strips to make sort of small diced tomato. And you're going to do this with two tomatoes for this soup. Normally, the soup would have a lot more of that, but since we're doing a variation, we're using the watermelon. For a more summery taste, you only need two. Once you have these chopped, go ahead and put them in your bowl. And then we're going to do the same thing with a little more than a cup of watermelon. So I have some that's done here already. So I'm going to go ahead and add in. And then we're going to just show how I cut the cubed watermelon. So same idea. There we go. So you can get to be a real expert at cubing everything for this meal since there's so much of it. The next thing we're going to cube is some fresh cucumber. Again, you want to get the seeds out, so you can just cut them out easily. You don't have to, it's just that the seeds can give people indigestion, and they're so it's just nicer to cut them out just in case somebody has trouble with it. And again, I cut it lengthwise and then across so that I have small pieces. One large cucumber should do it. And we add that in there. You're also going to use half a green Anaheim pepper and an orange Anaheim pepper. And you want to slice these and cut them. So we're going to go ahead and add that in. And this is a white Vidalia onion. These grow in the United States, and they are a sweet onion that only grows in the summertime. So um, if you're using regular yellow onion, you may want to use a little bit less because this is a milder onion that really does have a kind of a sweet taste. And we like to use them in salads. They're very nice raw. Next, I'm going to be grating some fresh ginger. And just do this on the side here. So this is about, oh, maybe a tablespoon at the most. Okay. And lime juice. One lime should do it, unless you want more. And finally, I'm going to be using about a 
handful of cilantro, which I'm going to chop. So you want to, when you buy the cilantro, it's going to be on the stem. This is time consuming, but you want to take the leaves off so that you don't have any stems in there. And you're probably wondering, well, gee, that looks like vegetables. That doesn't look like soup. Well, the soup is coming up. For the soup part, we need to use a blender. So, in order to give us real soup, we're going to take a big bowl of watermelon and just put it in a blender. It doesn't have to be a high-speed blender and put it on puree. And add it to all of the diced vegetables. Stir all of that in. And we have this beautiful cold soup now. The last touch is to salt it to taste. Today I'm using this beautiful pink Himalayan salt, which has a lot of iodine in it and is very good for you. I'm going to use about one teaspoon of this. You can use less, you can use more. And then you just place this in your refrigerator until it's time for your meal. Or you can eat it right away. But it's really nice chilled. So place this aside. Please come back and join us for part two of our show featuring some fresh summer delights. Watermelon, gazpacho, and garden fresh burrito with mango salsa. We'll be showing you how to create a wonderful mango salsa that pairs perfectly with our raw vegan burrito. How do you make and enjoy a burrito without needing tortillas? Find out Wednesday, September 14th on Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living. Coming up next is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. May the warm rays of the sun bless your days with carefree joy. Angeles. For today's celebration. Truly a global event. A global event, yeah. that's right. This musical is going to be absolutely fantastic. You bet it is. So now, everybody, get ready for one incredible journey around the world to 16 countries all on one stage. the songs of Loving the Silent Tears charged with the same kind of vibration as Supreme Master TV? More, more. <laughs> it's more direct and more undiluted. This one just, just direct, just all about God. Just all about longing for God. Just all about peace, love and kindness. 
more direct, undiluted. The influence will go beyond and continue when we spread it more out. And even before that, the vibration, the frequencies of these verses and music we carry through the whole world, you know, like a radio wavelength. <laughs> People's soul will understand it, even if their mind does not grasp it. People's souls will understand and be uplifted, all the same. Yes, and this will continue to the next generation. Yeah. Today, continuing our show on Garden Fresh Summer Eats, we'll be creating a raw vegan burrito served with mango salsa and the gazpacho. So, let's go ahead and get started. In order to do this properly, you really have to soak the nuts, which is going to be our burrito meat, and you want to do that right away. So basically, you can do this with cashews and almonds or cashews and walnuts or just cashews. Um, I like cashews, they just, they just have a really nice kind of neutral taste. And you want to put these into a glass jar. These are actually pecans which grow all over Texas and so they're really in season right now. And they also have a little bit of a sweet quality but not too much. Make sure that you do soak them in plenty of water. So you want them, the water to come up mm, a little bit past where your nuts are. So this should be good right here. And set it aside while you prepare everything else. If you want to do it in advance, you can put this in the refrigerator the night before. So we're going to start off making our mango salsa. And you can use either a yellow mango or you can use the regular larger red mango. That's fine. No problem. When you're cutting a mango, you want to get it on the tall side and then cut a little bit to the side because there's a big seed, so you don't want to go down right in the middle. And then from here, you're just going to scoop with a spoon, scoop it out. And once you get that out, then you're going to dice it into really small pieces. So I do it lengthwise first, cutting it lengthwise, and then to the side. And you do want really small pieces for the salsa. One mango is enough for four people for a garnish. The next thing that you're going to be working with are the peppers. And when you're working with these peppers, you definitely want to wear some plastic gloves because if you touch your eyes, you will be crying. This is an orange Anaheim pepper. It's not very, very, very hot, but it is a little bit spicy and it adds beautiful color to your salsa. So first you're just going to cut the end off and then you want to cut along the side and you just open that up and then you need to get rid of all the seeds. The seeds are very hot and you don't want any of that in your salsa. So once you've got it de-seeded. Then you're also going to just cut thin strips lengthwise. And I'll just do a few here just to show you. Then you just want a very finely diced pepper. Very small pieces. If you have a food processor, of course, this is really easy. You're going to do an entire pepper. So I have some here that I did earlier. And we're just going to add that in to our salsa here. So while I still have my gloves on, I'm going to also be cutting up this sereno pepper, which is a littler pepper, but it's hotter. It's not quite as hot as a jalapeno pepper, but still, you don't want to overdo it with this, unless you want very hot salsa, which some people really enjoy. This also needs to be de-seeded, 
and it's a little bit more complicated. You have to cut the seeds out. Sometimes it's good to do this in water because it's a little easier. And you're going to cut again the same way, lengthwise. So you want even smaller pieces if you can get them. And I like to put the whole pepper in. You don't have to because there are other herbs that are going to be added in. And if you like a milder salsa, you can only you can just do half. It's no problem. And we're going to cut again some very finely diced red onion. If you just take one thin slice and then cut it right down the middle and go around in a kind of a half moon shape. Then you get a very finely cut onion. And you can use white onion. I picked this because of the color and again because it's in season. Our next ingredient is going to be a little bit of pineapple, fresh pineapple. So this has already been cubed and I'm going to be slicing it also into s some smaller pieces. You don't really want to overdo this because it will make it too sweet, but it's really nice to have along with the mango. And it gives a really lovely flavor. So maybe three chunks is enough. Finally, we're going to add some herbs. First, some fresh mint. And this actually grows in my backyard. So we know that that's seasonal right now. And again, we want very finely chopped mint pieces. It's always good to just go in the opposite direction. So you get really small pieces. And last, with our herbs, we have some cilantro, which is sort of a staple Mexican herb for Mexican food here in Texas especially. We love cilantro. Put it in everything. And there's also a beautiful light shade of green. I'm chop that up finely. All we have now to do is to mix it. So I've got my bigger bowl here for mixing and I'm just going to put all of the ingredients for my mango salsa in the bowl and mix it around so you can start to see how pretty this is going to be once all of those colors get mixed up together. Finally, we're going to add some lime juice. I'm just going to do not quite a whole lime's worth, but enough to give it a really nice limey taste. It also helps it to all come together, all of the, almost like a marinade. And mix it one more time. And then this is ready to go into the refrigerator and just start sort of mingling. Let all of these tastes, these marvelous tastes, mingle together. So once you have this ready, you can just place it in your refrigerator. So we're going to get started on our fresh garden burritos. For our meat substance, we're using the soaked nuts. Usually in a burrito, you have guacamole and salsa. Well, we've already made our mango salsa. And now instead of making a guacamole, I'm going to make a cilantro sauce with avocados, onion, and cilantro and garlic. We're going to use two avocados. I've already prepared one of them. Now you'll just see how I'm preparing this. It's very easy. Just get rid of the pit, scoop it out, and you can put this right into your blender. This is some more chopped Vidalia white onion. You can use green onion, you can use regular yellow onion too, but I would suggest either the white sweet onion or the green onion. And this is about mm, three tablespoons, about a cup of fresh cilantro, and some fresh garlic. 
This is just a garlic press. We're going to use some lemon, about half a lemon for juice. And you can use soy sauce. I like to use Bragg, which is a liquid aminos. It's also made from soy. About one and a half tablespoons. Some cumin, really just a dash there of cumin. And this is uh, Cajun salt. There we go. Maybe about a half a teaspoon of that. We're ready to blend. I've got my water here. You're going to put it on puree. I've got the top open here, so I'm just going to put my hand over it so that it doesn't splatter. So here goes. And I'm just adding enough water to make a sauce. And there it is. So we're going to set this aside. You would also probably like to put this in the refrigerator while we make our burritos. Now I'm ready to start working on my burrito nut meat. These have been soaking and I just strained them. And I'm going to put them into the blender. And you're going to need to use a blender that will pulse chop. So it'll chop but you know, not continuously, that it will pulse. And you'll see what I mean when I turn this on. If you don't have a blender that will pulse, then you can just turn it off and on if you need to. So you're going to want to add some water, but not too much at first, just a little bit. And then you just have to listen to it and make sure. So here we go. Here's the chop. And just a little bit more water. a little more. So you don't want it to be creamy because then you'll end up with cashew butter. But you do want it to be sort of coarsely chopped so it's almost like a pate feel. Mix it around and then just turn it back on one more time. What's looking about right now? So, once you've done that, I'm going to put it all back in the bowl. And then you're going to season this the same way you would season taco soy meat, you know, with the same kind of seasoning. The nice thing about something like this is that you can use this base to make all kinds of different flavored things. Just today we're doing Mexican for our burritos. And I'm going to be using some chili powder. Generous amount of that. Enough to cover it. Some cumin. And this is all ground to a powder. This is a Mexican seasoning, which you can probably get. You don't need to, but it, it just has some other th things in it, like tomato powder and onion powder. I always like a little bit of this Cajun salt because it, it's tasty. And just a little bit more of the brag to get enough salt in there. And you mix that all together. And then I've chopped some green onion, some, some green scallion. And I've already done some of it. I'll go ahead and uh, add that in. There we go. And then we just mix that up. And believe it or not, we have prepared everything and we're ready to plate. So now that we've done all of this preparation, 
putting it together and plating it is very simple. Instead of tortillas, which are made out of flour, which are cooked, we're going to be using Napa cabbage leaves. So I'll take two of the larger Napa cabbage leaves here for my tortillas. And then I'm going to be putting my taco nut meat here. Spread it out there. Just like this. And then on top of the nut, then we put the cilantro sauce on top. And finally, our beautiful mango salsa. Perfect. There are our garden fresh burritos. And plating the soup, just put it in the bowl. There it is, refreshing, light, and fragrant. Texans love their iced tea, and so I thought it would be appropriate to serve mint iced tea with this dish. There we are. I guess I should try it. Should I try it? <laughs> Let's start with the soup. Mmm. It's so refreshing. And when this is finger food, you can eat it with a knife and fork, but just like a regular burrito, you just pick it up, take a bite. Mm. That is really good. Thanks for joining us today on Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television, up next between Master and Disciple.